Hey all, oh, I'm back. This is video two. I'm still in the same at here because I'm all technically speaking it's the same day. Um so we uh, I, as you all know, I've just been up to the Arctic Circle and I fitted a light and there's a lot of discussion on the forums and in the groups about how do you fit them, how are they to fit and how would you go about fitting them and all these sorts of things. Uh, now, what I've done here is I'm still using this gimbal, which is probably not going to be my friend for this job, so you'll just have to excuse while I try and point it in right <laughs> in the right direction because it's, it's very good at sort of wobbling my hand around. It's very good at tracking my head. And when I turn it round, it's, it's quite good at tracking a single object, but you can't move it around because it won't stay, wants to do what it, what it says on tin, really. It wants to stay still. Anyway, shut up, Firthy. I'll turn the camera around here now. Oh, look, this is... Finn's got his hood up. Look, now, um, there's a... Uh, the, the, the roof light I've mounted here, I've mounted, as you can see, um, on the on the underside here um, of the of this of the the expedition roof, one well, the only expedition roof, right? And it's a champion fit, if you can just see here. It's a little bit well, it's exactly six inches longer than the this bit of black metal affair here is is thirty two inches, uh, and and this light bar is allegedly forty inches. So there's there's eight. Am I doing my math right here? 40 inches, 32 inches, so there's two inches aside, right? So there's two inches aside, sort of two inches aside. There's uh, eight to 40, eight inches or four inches or so aside here uh, that you can see that overlaps the thing. Uh, and originally I'd intended the light bar that I'd bought just to sit in front of this bit of a wind deflector thing. On the understanding that Land Rover, in their infinite wisdom, had tried a number of uh, variations to make this this wind deflector thing worked properly and I thought that if I hung over the outside it would cause a little bit of noise which is a usual thing for for light bars and whatever you know uh, I'm going to try and make this lighter here can you see how I've done this sort of bracket I'll tell you more about that in a second but then any room um so that's what I've, the, this is where I mounted the the light bar oh I say I told you the gimbal weren't going to be me pal uh, and it sits there now now I've fitted this it sort of looks the part because it's oh I say it's the right it's the right length and it's it just looks spit spot there, uh, but what I can tell you here is that if you're not careful, you can see that this uh, this roof light thing this light bar sits sort of can you see that's the down there that's the sunroof, uh, and the sunroof will tilt but it won't slide because it keep it gets caught on the bottom of this uh, and gets caught on the bottom of this thing. Now I'm going to cut magically to a set of dimensions that I've taken with a tape measure to show you but basically what you need is in between the bottom of this light bar and the top of here you're going to need two inches and I've only got an inch and a half you can just see can you just see underneath there how it's very close there and when it tilts up it tilts up fine but then it tries to come out and it and it sort of doesn't anyway so if you're going to fit something here be mindful that you're going to need more space than what I've got now the steady bar is the same depth as this light the same sort of thickness or I'd call that depth or whatever maybe it's thickness any road the thickness uh the steady is the same thickness uh but the steady doesn't mount like this does the steady has brackets that come out and it's going to mount on straight onto this plate and uh, and, and push against it so it actually sits a bit further forwards uh, and that lets the the I've measured it all up me saying what I'm talking about uh, and that lets the, the thing come up. But that bar doesn't. The downside to the steady is that it's meant to be one way up because it's got some little side light things in the bottom. And this light bar is actually on upside down. Uh, and the cable comes out this side where I've run my wires, which is very helpful. I'll tell you about that in a second. But super helpful that. But I can't do that with the steady because it, it only goes one way. So I've got somehow I've got to uh, I've got to try and run the wire across the top and then out on the side. It's going to be a bit of a going to be a bit of a nightmare. Now, what I'm going to tell you now uh, is how the wiring's done, and that's a bit more complicated. And it's not complicated because it's technical. You know, it's technical wiring. Apart to close to garage door here. I'm not going to tell you that it's too complicated to run the wires. I'm just going to tell you that it's fiddly, and it's fiddly because of the way. Uh, the vehicle is sort of laid out. Now, there's power here. You can see this is your 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 takeoff point for your jump starting thing. If you want to boost a car or jump start this or something, here's your positive, and then your ground lug 
Look, they've, they've made a nice one here. They've just put it at bottom. Can you see? Oh, let me take this light and show you there. Can you see? They've put one at bottom. It's grand, that, isn't it? it would be if I've got this light out to run. So there's a grand uh, jump boost point there, and, and there's another dude here, look, with, um, uh, with negative somewhere. You can grab on the top of this uh, uh, this torsion bar here for the engine, whatever. Uh, or there's a, 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 a sort of a point here as well. Can you see on the top of that plate? Get that out at road, you can see that too. So there's plenty of grounds and there's plenty of positives right here for your relay. And you can see that what I've done, well, you will if I move the light in the right direction. What you can see here is that I've snug my relay under there, look, isn't it nice? And I've got another one to put up there because shortly she'll have a laser light bar as well. Um, now, it were, a bit of, <laughs> it were a bit of a bear to put that. Can you see there's a bit I can't point because I'm holding light. Well, maybe I can. Uh, you see this little bit of a, a nut here that, that's holding this relay on. <laughs> holding the, the nut at the back, it looks like a perfect spot. You just get your fingers behind, but the reality is, uh, unless you've got Tinkerbell fingers, you're never going to get that in there. Um, and I ended up using a pair of pliers, basically, but sort of angled pliers to sort of squeeze it in. But the reality is that it works when you get it in. Now... Uh, this is my this is my braided light. You can't, I'm making the thing go all funny. Focus go wrong. This is my braided wire. Can you see there? That's my braided wire, and that is to the light harness uh, that runs into the cab. And then this fella here, which is the old school cable, uh, that is some conduit that I've used uh, to run to the lights. Now this conduit, as you can see, runs all the way along. I'll try and point it helpfully <laughs> but uh and it goes underneath all of this lot here and it comes out there which uh, my light is not being able to they are so it comes out there and then under this panel here uh it just basically cuts through the corner uh of this panel there's a bit of an hole there and then it cuts through this corner and it disappears he says old in light in road it disappears now a whole car the old car is made out of magnesium or some such thing it's not made out of aluminium they say this time and this is magnetic here and so the this fancy light i've got here which is super duper won't stick to anything at all there's like there's no part of the land roller that it'll stick to it <laughs> very inconvenient is what it is but also very good um so this that cable goes all the way up that can you see there can i can i just get that in a better place i can't really um it goes up that sort of, oh, come on, light. It goes up that corner there. And then this is the tricky bit. Uh, so buried down here, um, if my camera will move, buried down here is where is where the, the conduit comes from, comes out of this the slam panel. I'm struggling to show you there. That's better. And it comes out of the slam panel. Now, I've stalled it here. Can you see very carefully? Uh, I shall try and zoom in, but this is going to go horribly wrong. Um, there you are, look. So I've, I've, I've stalled the conduit there and I've wrapped it with insulting tape because underneath there is a bit of a space, and it's a tiny space, but it is a space, and it runs underneath this Stormtrooper sort of shaped plastic slam panel, and then it runs along the corner of here, and underneath this this a post and, and you can just about if you just wrap three uh i'll just pull back here if you can just wrap three um three wires straight sort of one on top of each other and then wrap them with insulting tape then uh then it goes up here fine uh and then it, it goes up oh i don't need this now it goes up that a post pillar and it comes out the top now this is the bit i'm not happy with Firthy doesn't like this uh this panel, he says, and I am going to get a light here to, to elucidate uh, a bit of something on the problem. Now, this top panel here, um, this top panel is actually plastic, this bit here. Um, believe it or not, it would be very helpful if I could just stick that somewhere. This panel here is plastic, uh, and it actually clips on, but you can't find out from Land Rover where the clips are, how many they are, what kind they are, just in case I break it. Uh, and so you can actually, you would be able to pull it up if you see what I mean. There's a bit of a ledge under here and you can pull it up. Uh, so here's the lip, uh, the sort of, and what I presume happens is this is some sort of water drainage channel. 
and the water off the roof comes into here and then runs onto the window and, and off. And what I've done is I've pulled the wires out of here without causing any drama and I've put some gutter sealant on, which isn't the nicest job in the world, but a, a, ma a blind man on a speeding neddy wouldn't notice. Uh, and he's done all the way up the, the Dempster Highway and he's never battered an eyelid. So, so it's not the neatest job on the planet, as you can see. Uh, but it, it looks terrible there, but it, it doesn't look so bad in real life. Uh, and then what I've done is I've tucked the wires underneath this bit of this bit of a plastic roof because if you go in this gutter, it goes down and, and under quite a way. And you can shove all the wires. I can't show you because there's there's no to see. But if you shove the wires down in here and then underneath, and then what I've done is I've pulled them all the way along here. I've followed it all along this line here and then across under here, which is the same sort of story, a bit of a rubber thing, and then just pull them out here and, and in you go. Uh, now, I say just, that actually took a lot of doing. And to put this on was the worst bit because I wanted to make sure that there was enough silicon underneath it so that water didn't sort of come underneath it and get sort of stuck under here. So I put silicon underneath and then I push the wires in and then I run a, a shape to make sure that the water, when it does come, sort of comes off and then up over the silicon and whatever. And it's not the best idea. I, don't like, I would prefer to sneak them under here. Um, and on the other side, this panel here, where this gap is, there's, there isn't enough, the reason I've done this is because there's just not enough room to put the three wires. But on the other side, because Land Rover's panel fit is so excellent, <laughs> it's about half a yard on the other side, and them three wires would have fit nicely, I'll show you in a minute, they would have fit nicely in there and been able to tuck it up. But on this corner, they don't. So this panel, if I could have shifted it over a bit, and I did try very gently with the pry bar, you know, one of them little plastic trim tool things, uh, to ooch it over. But you can't because it's sort of, it's sort of, it's involved here with this bit of a, you know, this rubber seal, and then presumably the summit at the bottom that you clip into. And I'm guessing that the back end comes up and you can kind of mooch it about a bit. But seeing as I can't get any sensible answer out of Land Rover, that's how it is. I didn't want drill holes because drilling holes is bad. Um, and so that's what I've done. Now, the other reason that I've, I, you can see that it's got some shrink wrap here. This is black shrink wrap that I've wrapped the things in. And in here, you've just got three sort of wires side by side um, with just a bit of insulation to hold them side by side because you don't have a lot of room in here. Underneath here is a sort of a Tongan groove affair that you slide this, uh, this door post, this a pillar up. And it's, and it's better than the original one, which was just a bang-in clip. This is a kind of a, like, you slot it in and push it up. And then underneath here, there's a there's a, a, a bolt that you fasten. This fella is a bit awkward to pull out. You kind of have to unpull it at the... You have to... Un, un, with the trim tool, you've got to sort of pull it out at the back here. And then you've got to pull it round a touch and then slide it down at the same time as you sort of tilt it out. It's a bit of a... It's a nightmare, but... Um, but if you have the A-pillar mod, which is some fancy felt bits, if you've got the A-pillar mod, they actually fetch you a fresh one of these. You've got to spray it up because it comes black. But um, they, they fetch you a fresh one. But you also need a clip because you bust a clip in here when you pull it out. Uh, if you're not careful, it's like one of them spring clips and you sort of pull it off. So you need a spring clip if you're going to take this off uh, just in case you bust it. I bust it once. Uh, and then fitted a fresh one uh, at Land Rover, and then I busted it again when I when I fiddled up here and made it nicer. Uh, I busted it again, <laughs> but I were able to glue it back together with some fancy uh, super glue and and whatever. Any road, I pulled it back together, and it all worked. So now underneath at the point of all this is underneath here. You have to have these three wires uh, side by side like my fingers. You can't have them sort of sat on top of each other in a mess. Uh, because you don't have the room. And then what I did was I just put a piece of tape over in various places, hold it. Now, there's three wires go up here, not for this light, but for the steady light. I said it's got side lights in. So you need one wire for the side lights, and then you need another wire for your main beam light, if you see what I mean. Um, and uh, and that's, how, that's how I fastened this up here. Now, what, I've, what you can do is this piece here, which you can see has a line in it. Uh, I can't show you, but I'm going to cut to a still next because Firthy did this in anticipation. Uh, on the inside of here, on this edge, is one screw. Uh, and the screw basically has this as a rod that comes in here and you screw into the side of it, basically. 
Uh, and then if you undo that screw when you've got to take this this first rail off you've got to take the rail off and slide it back which is a bear in itself but take that off and slide it back undo that screw and then this old front cap bit falls on the floor and then you can turn it upside down on your best table and you can drill these holes in now as i've shown you before i drilled these holes here uh one here look i'm just going to try and make this lighter if i can how do i do that they are you can see here I made this bolt hole here and I put a piece of rubber underneath it so it doesn't scratch the aluminium. But this light, when I bought it off the, the Facebook marketplace, it didn't come with any brackets. So I had to make that and then I made this adjustable. As you can see, I made an elongated slot here. And the reason for that is because making these things fit is not an exact science. Uh, often the case is you need a gap at the top to let the air through and sometimes you don't need a gap at the top and so you need to be able to move it up and down and twist it and adjust it and all that kind of stuff but I found that it whistled when I left a bit of a gap in between these two the, between this and the top of this and so what I did was I uh, can I just, I'll just pull back and zoom in because I've got the technology I just put some silicon in here right at the top and that stopped the wind whistling over the top and it, it actually made a grand job of it um, so I'm quite reluctant actually in some respects to take this off here because um, because it actually fits jolly nicely and it just it looks the part uh, but it's a terrible well, it's, it's not a terrible light it just doesn't point light in the right direction and it looks tip top you know it looks like it's the right width and it just fits in between the the actual roof caps nicely and all the rest of it so I'm a bit reluctant to take it off and I may or may not do that yet but the the, the other steady light really does work a lot better um, uh, it's a top the study the steady thing shout out to the boys at steady uh, well the top people at steady actually uh, top bananas and um, their product is really actually very very good it's it's almost as good as the laser lamp products from from well laser lights in the UK uh, but it's it's less than a quarter of the price anyway I'm going to go back here because what I want to do is that I'm going the wrong way here what I want to do is I want to just show you uh well i will when i get me thing um this uh this cable that oh i say this cable here that i'm pointing at this is the the cable that runs the um uh the feed to the switch which i mounted inside and i've snugged that uh, you have to be careful that it, this is one of the car things and then my other one is about here you can see these temporary now these fuses that are put in here uh again i ordered some special uh and proper fuse mounts you know like a, a like a, a waterproof fuse thing um but to put these in here uh just for the just for the the time being because uh i needed something and i couldn't get it the time the night you know and the, i was doing this at sort of two in the morning and i couldn't get any fuse holders um but i've got a i've got a fancy a fancy blade fuse holder that i'm going to mount uh are going to mount into here nicely and make it all snug and neat uh and uh, and fit properly if you see what i mean and that way i don't have to worry about these these dodgy sort of fuses and that's why they're only sort of taped up for the moment for two reasons and in fact there's another reason and i'll tell you about I'll, I'll tell you about that now so the other reason i didn't put the fuses in apart from the fact that they didn't have them at the time is that this relay uh currently what it does like most relays is it just switches the power so the switch that's in the car actually switches the power and it turns the light on and off but but uh of course that's not how i want the light to work what i want to happen is when when i flick the main beam on i want the lights to come on with the main beam and i want the switch to prohibit that from happening not make it happen so the switch eventually will need to switch the ground to the light not the positive and that way what can happen is that i'm able to isolate the switch so that my main beam can come on without the switch happening now the reason i want that to happen is because down here and i can't really show you actually let me try uh down here tucked behind here if i can just get my camera in the right angle and a bit of light on the job you can just see here uh, he says what am i pointing at just here perhaps you can't see um just here where my hand is right at the back of the light you can see this big cable uh well this big cable is below uh, a, a clamping unit a sort of a clip 
you can just kind of see the wires there can you see they're right at the top of me i think i'm not doing a grand job of here but you can just see those wires can i get down any lower i can't maybe you can go down oh can you see here if i do that that's not helping you at all is it mm, there you go look right so right down here you can just see right there uh if my camera will focus you can just see the end of the wire uh, and what that is is that is the bundle of wires that drive the headlamp unit here it is now you can pull this off actually quite i did this last time relatively easily there we are look oh you'll have to just excuse me pointing the camera in the wrong direction right here you are look look what i've done so this is the bundle of wires that fit the headlamp unit uh, and you can see it, they just all sort of run in the back here now that purple chap that's on the top uh, that purple chap there that's your trigger wire for your main beam and it's a full voltage wire so if you tapped into that it, it was not a can bus affair if you tapped into it it would drive uh your relay if you wanted you know if you want to just have that hard hard connection sort of thing um but i don't want a hard connection what i want is i want to wrap the laser lamp uh can bus uh, reader around that which is an inductive loop system and it allows you to pull peel back the the tape that you can sort of see down there or not see down there because my hand's in the way you can peel back this tape and you just wrap around this sensor wire around the purple wire uh, and it automatically detects when there's when there's a, a voltage in it um and so when the when the main beams are on, it detects that there's voltage running through it. And then that itself figures another sort of an interface unit um, and, uh, and and drives your relay, really, basically. I'm going to just struggle to put this back in here. It's never going to work, is it? Further you muppet. Right, there you are. So I wrap that purple wire with this uh, uh, inductive coil loop sort of thing that's from laser lamps and then i bring that wire out and i'm going to mount that to their uh laser can sort of sensor thing and then that the wire comes out of that and it'll drive this relay and that's my switch wire for the relay and then that of course needs to run all the way up to the to the to the um uh, to the light on the roof but the fuses of course that i've got over here aren't going to fuse the uh the the positive they're going to fuse um ooh, well they are going to fuse the positive but they're going to fuse the positive uh input to the uh to the lamp as well as uh as well as the uh the po what's the other one for oh yeah to the switch itself uh because i'm still going to leave the switch in there but the switch itself is going to switch the ground wire not the positive wire uh that way i can uh, the, the light would automatically come on if you see what i mean with the main beam but then be switched off because i'm actually disconnecting the ground not the positive so um the light's always on with the main beams until i tell it not to be on and then that's that so that's basically why that's those fuses are like that so i'm not doing a bit of an eth robinson john although i am <laughs> i am accustomed to that kind of technology what i'm actually doing this time around is something else now uh, i've been raffling on for 20 minutes here and what i'm very quickly going to show you if i can grasp my light uh, as i'm going to wander into the cab here uh and i'm going to show you where i've mounted my switch because this is another question that people have asked where have you because land rover done a very very cracking job of making this all nice and neat with absolutely no uh electrics in or anything like that uh switches you know additional switches or whatever because it's all done through the pivy pro and and your your sort of main wipeable down sort of water resistant switch panel here that's uh um that's very nicely covered in dust in Firthy's car because it's a working unit as it is so what i've done here is you've got a little can you see here you've got a little um you've got a little next to your handbrake unit this is your park switch uh you've got a little dashboard light affair that uh, allows you to turn your this isn't going to work Firthy, you've got the light in wrong uh to, to turn your dashboard lights up and down and i use that a lot when when we're at night time in the mountains because uh, these fancy lights are actually quite bright in the dashboard and they do detract so what i've got after that is i've got below here you've got a little a little switch blank now i've temporarily mounted this lighty up switch here look, look how it lights up uh, i temp i'm going to show you that again now uh i yeah, see it lights up when it lights on there it is look bright light on garage doer um 
And so uh, I put it there just temporarily for the time being because this blank I'm taking out. Uh, Land Rover have a switch for here that's called a gas tank depressurization switch. I have absolutely no idea what it does. But my man in Land Rover tells me that it's for the D200s, which is a bit odd because I know a couple of people with D200s in England and they don't have it fitted. So anyway, they do make one and it fits right in there. Now, this bit of a cluster affair here, um, let me see if I can just show you. It's a bit hard, but it just pops out. You have to clip out the top underneath here with your, your fancy trim tool. Um, it would help if you showed some light on the job there, you are. You just get your, your your trim tool behind there and you sort of pop it out. And then there's a, a multi-plug at the back, you unplug. These things, uh, in my experience, uh, are very hard to get out. And I tried very, very nicely with some micro screwdrivers and it broke any road. Um, and you can see I've given it a bit of gravel rash here because it was it was being very uncooperative. But I'm not, I can't see it. So, um, uh, this switch is coming out altogether and this depressurization switch is... Is, is being fitted uh, and I'm going to rub out with the, with some alcohol and and uh, brake cleaner you can get rid of the little the little markings here on the side look. and it's all their switch is just a press and hold switch um, but a press and hold switch will operate what they call a bi-stable relay uh, or a lock it a latching relay and that's a relay that that takes a power to energize the coil uh, and then it takes power to de-energize the coil because it kind of it sort of latches in the on position and then latches in the off position if you see what i mean this is my hand version of a relay uh, and so you only need to press it once and then the lights will switch off or on uh, and then and then press it again and it'll come off with this sort of special bi-stable relay so i'm going to have to change the, it's only a, it's only a standard uh four position relay i mean it's the same kind of relay it fits in the same way but um you have to have an extra wire to to operate the the, the sort of latch if you see what i mean anyway so that is how i've installed the the switch and it is kind of out of the way uh and this is the other side of the of the thing uh the light as you can see you can see a bit better in there can't you anyway that's how i've installed the lights there <clears throat> there may be other ways i'm certain and i'm sure other people have done a nicer job of it uh and i probably will show you how i've fitted the steady if i if i do go about fitting that uh right so there you are that's basically all i've got to tell you about that um and with any luck that oh there's one more thing i've got to tell you first you shut up man bloody hell this thing's going to be half an hour of a job here before you know what you're doing <sighs> now my gimbal's sort of frozen here and he's decided that he's not turning around come on there you are right now, the last bit and very important part of, of the, the information here that I didn't just tell you before and that I should is that the way you get the wire into the cab is actually... It's under here. And I've put the thing back and I've put the slam panels up. So this bit of the plastic grill affair here, uh, underneath here, the wire runs all the way along from the other side of the car uh, it runs all the way along, and underneath here is your is your uh, your wiper arm affair. You know your, your wiper arm, dude. Uh, and underneath here is a big grommet, and it's on the bulkhead. And your steering column comes down through it. Um, and it's a bit of a strange affair because it's a massive grommet. It's a sort of a key, like an old-fashioned key shape. Uh, and it's got a, a, a plastic um, retention device all around it. And it's got like three or four screws in it. Uh, and what you do is you undo the screws a little bit because it, it sort of that, those screws hold the rubber grommet to the face. And then you drill a hole in it. Well, I suppose you didn't really need to have to undo the plastic retention device. But you drill a hole in the grommet. The reason I did was because when I drilled the hole in the grommet, it's rubber. And it's very hard, and of course you you push, and then it, it sort of pushed the grommet in a little bit, and it, when it wouldn't come back out because it had sort of pulled out of the out of the holding bit. Anyway, drill a hole in your plastic in your rubber grommet, and then through that you can feed the the wires. There's only there's only two, obviously. Feed the wires to the switch, um, and then if you drill right in the middle of the grommet, if you, if you imagine this is the grommet, and you drill on the centre line behind the grommet is a gap in the bulkhead sound deadening stuff, uh, and you can feed your wires through and then up, 
and then round by the thing. Um, and to get at that, what you would do is you would come underneath here. No, come on, gimbal, focus on what I'm telling you to do. Don't do your own thing. Um, and then what you what you do uh, is you undo this plate here. You see these. Uh, why are you not coming around there? You, are. you see these screws here? These are seven seven mil bolt affairs. There's three of them. You just undo those three, and then this plate sort of falls on the floor. Um, and the OBD reader things there, and you just have to disconnect the the light bulb, with some foot light or whatever it is. And you disconnect that foot light, and then you can reach right up here with the with the brake pedal. And at the top of the brake pedal, of course, is the is the brake unit up there. And the wire comes through the bulkhead up there uh, and you sort of feed it across the top of the brake pedal box and then and then into your switch box here, which is sort of very handy, really. Anyway, uh, so that's what happens. There's the there's the grommety things under there and uh, and you feed your wires through and then up and over and, and, and sort of away you go. That's how I've wired my switch up, of course. You might not want to use a switch at all if you wanted to wire it directly to your main beam. And if you buy something like the Smart View from Laser, of course, it comes with a, a sort of its own controller box that you'd have to mount to your window, I suppose, somewhere up in your window or whatever. Uh, and then uh, and then you don't need a switch, it's sort of an hard wired switch at all. But, um, that's how I've done mine. And, and there's plenty of room under there to run cables. There's loads of room. And handily enough, it just comes out underneath there you perhaps might just be able to see if I zoom in. Uh, you can just see where that black wire comes out. Well, next to it, of course, is the, the braided stuff. Um, and that's the wire that comes out. You can just see uh, right there in the middle of the screen, a bit of tape that's holding that temporary split for the fuses there. Uh, anyway, that's that. That's all I've got to say. Hope that helps. This has gone on far too long for the uh, Muppet. Do like and subscribe uh, if, you <laughs> if you feel the need. To come and watch Firthy mess about in his garage again with uh, with Finn the Adorable. Uh, sorry about mess at garage. Look at the state of it. It's the right mess, isn't it? I'm not normally like this, but things are still sort of uh, not finished from the last time, if you know what I mean. Um, right, now the other thing I've got to say, uh, very quickly, is a shout out to Andy Thompson. Uh, good up with Andy, pal Andy from school. Uh, messed about together, we did. And uh, he's just found me me uh, YouTube channel as I've been waxing lyrical about these sorts of things and, and he said hey Firthy would you give me a shout out on your next one so I am so they are uh, more Defender Excellence cheerio